Concussion in sport, the role of governing bodies. Last week, the NFL reported a 24% drop in the number of concussions during the 2018 American football season. Medical officials have cautioned that it is too soon pinpoint a reason for the dramatic reduction, but many are already pointing to high-profile rule change as a contributing factor. The Six Nations kickoff in Paris this evening, and Wales will be without fullback Lake Halfpenny, who was not played since he sustained a concussion in November. It seems likely that head injuries continue to be a high-profile issue during the tournament, so this article looks at some of the difficult particle and legal issues that governing bodies need to consider when addressing concussion in sport. Lesson from the U.S. Recent development in the United States highlight the risk that governing bodies face when it comes to liability for a player's injuries. The NFL continues to be marred with litigation following a class action raised on behalf of former NFL players. The players allege that the league had hidden the dangers of head trauma from them. A settlement was reached with the NFL last year and is widely reported to be in the region of $1 billion, but dispute continue about term of the settlement. While it may be an expansive lesson, the latest statistics do suggest that the steps taken by the NFL are beginning to pay off. To take one example, this season, the NFL introduced a rule preventing players from leading or initiating contact with their helmet on tackles. It was greeted with widespread confusion and criticism from players, coaches, and fans because of the difficulties officiating the rule, but the NFL stood by the chain. Other contact sports have taken notice of the issues faced by the NFL. Governing bodies have implemented a rule change and issued guidance aimed at improving their sport response to head injuries. The French Rugby Federation, for example, has proposed reducing tackles to Wayne's Hague following the death of a state franchise academy player, the third young player in French to die after a rugby game in the preceding five months. As well as creating a safer playing environment, this chain may also reduce their legal liability and exposure to similar claim. Who is responsible? When a player suffers financial loss because of head injury, the normal legal test for negligence is applied to decide whether a party is liable. This means asking who owes the player a duty of care, whether their action fell below the accepted standard, and whether the harm suffered was reasonably foreseeable. Applying this test in practice is difficult. A number of different parties could potentially be liable for the damage caused by the head injury. Participant Players owe all other participants a duty not to cause them harm. However, this duty is tested against the rules of the game in question and the playing culture of the sport. In some sports, serious injury can be sustained even when the rules are followed. It may be difficult to prove liability unless there was a conduct amounting to a reckless disregard for the player's safety. At the moment, it is rare for a player to be able to meet a large damage claim, except at the elite end of well-funded sport. However, there are indications that the landscape is changing, with amateur golfers routinely now carrying insurance. In a 2003 case, the court held that the referee of an amateur rugby match owed a duty to players to exercise reasonable care when enforcing rules that minimize the risk of injury. The referee allowed an inexperienced player to participate in the front row of the scrum. This breached the rules of the game and was held to be the cause of the accident. In that case, the Welsh Rugby Union had appointed the referee for the match and it was accepted that they were therefore vicariously liable for the player's injury. Governing Bodies Governing bodies are responsible for the laws and regulation of a sport. They can have many other functions, however, their potential liability stem from their control over the rules of the sport. In doing so, governing bodies often assume responsibility for determining appropriate procedures and controls to minimize the adverse consequences of injury. 
to Dagan Ensemble. In 1991, boxer Michael Watson fought Chris Eubank for the WBO Super Middleweight title. The referee stopped the fight in the final round when Watson appeared to be unable to defend himself. He had sustained a brain hemorrhage. Thank you.